Captain? You turned around, hands folded behind your back. Sergeant Sun? Our troops are advancing as planned! You smirked. <laughs> I told you that my plans always work out, didn't I? The sergeant bowed before you. This skirmish had lasted for 30 minutes now. The mission was simple. You drop in with your squad in an alien-filled space station and take back control of the primary facilities. What you didn't expect was the sheer amount of green bastards firing their blasters at you and your units. At the moment you were still in your dropship, giving out commands to both your units in battle, but also the reinforcements you are ordering. Your PDA was connected to the facility's cameras. It allowed you to observe the alien menace and your own soldiers as they were battling it out. Your eyes narrowed. Something was wrong. Quickly, you typed in commands into your PDA. What's wrong? They're actually pushing back. Angrily, you grabbed one of your own blasters. Oh, that alien scum hasn't seen the last of me, you growled. Uh, Captain, I, I have to remind you, if you die out there... I won't. W well, you better, because if you die, we lose and have to reset the game. You blinked. Right. You almost forgot. You tended to have an overactive imagination. The pizza plex was closed. Not because of a fire, for once. And also not because of a police investigation, because a child was kidnapped or shoved into a suit. No, uh, the pizza plex was closed because today was maintenance day. It happened once a month. During this time, on-duty engineer Kevin, a lovely man in his 40s with a passion for machinery, the on-site mechanic, some lazy guy who spent most of the time in the employee lounge, seeing maintenance day as a free paycheck, and you, a day shift guard, all too eager to work specifically today. As the name implied, maintenance day was the day where every animatronic in the pizza plex had a full routine checkup on both their endoskeletons and their shells. Cash-wise, for all employees chosen, it was just another day, but mentally, it wasn't. There were no screaming customers, no emergencies like a vomiting child. But also, most importantly, since there was no one around, you could play Phaser Blast for free and without the fear of getting yelled at by your boss for wasting company time. So, after Freddy had finished his repairs, which likely was just a simple adjustment to his eyes, and a new foot, you decided to spend some time with him. Thing was, he only really wanted to play Gator Golf. And when it came time for Phaser Blast, he retreated into one of his charging stations. But luckily, to your surprise, the daycare attendant had been there too. Apparently, someone left the door to the daycare open and he got curious. To prolong the game, you used a special power normal customers didn't have and that was control over security bots. And a security tablet that let you see the cameras. However, it seemed as if the security bots weren't the tactile genius as you expected them to be. After all, they weren't programmed to take cover, unlike the alien bots. It was fun though, and maybe you'd gotten a little too into it. You returned your attention to your, um, sergeant. You forgot one thing. Dramatically, you took hold of your Phaser Blast helmet and put it on. I'm a human. Your gun in your right, your security tablet in your left, you're about to march into Phaser Blast. And an idea came to you. Inside the attraction's lobby, you took a ride into the armory. 
It's very intelligent to stock up on ammunition, Rhaegard. Uh, however, it is against the rules to have more than one grenade. And more than two blasts. Why are you still taking more grenades? All warfare is based on deception, you muttered as you marched through the battlefield. Turning to look behind yourself, you called out to Sun. Uh, Sun Tzu said that. A very intelligent Chinese guy. Uh, this day guard, I feel like that was a little insensitive. Responded the animatronic with concern. Gun and PDA in hand. For a sheer streak of luck, you had reached the front line of your invasion. You were ducking behind cover, your security bots bravely firing into the mass of alien bots. Moral fading, reported one of the machines. Initiating. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you're not going back, you shouted at the robot. Calculated chance of victory. Pew. The robot went limp for a moment before quietly returning to the respawn area of Phaser Blast. He had just shot it in the head. Keep in mind, maggots, deserters will get shot. Sun gave you a disapproving look. That was our own man! Are you going to stay like that? Seriously? Okay. You smiled and then used your tablet to turn off the lights inside of Phaser Blast. While it appeared counterproductive at the same time, this had a very intended effect on your little companion. Why? What did I do? <laughs> he screamed, but it was too late. The robot began to convulse as his head spikes retreated into his head. <laughs> Why did you do that? You watched as your sergeant fell on the ground, standing up mere seconds later. His clothes turned from a vibrant yellow into a cool blue. His eyes no longer white and yellow, but a deep crimson. Moon looked around. <sighs> Where am I? What's happening? Without saying a word, you shoved a phaser blaster onto him, and you took it like a precious artifact. Ooh, I like this, he said as he pointed it at the wall. This will certainly make me more intimidating. This will probably get nap time rules to be... Um, held up. You're my sergeant. You interrupted the machine as he was mumbling. What? Oh, I see. Ah, we are... we are in the middle of a fight. Hmm. Okay. Miss Security Guard? He said that with way too much excitement in his voice. Point, and I shoot. He bowed before you. I will slay whatever will endanger you, my lady. Um, this is more future warfare, not medieval. He blinked. Well, in that case, our space empire shall prosper. Fighting with Moon was way different. He let you cheat. You used two blasters. And more grenades. Heck, he even cheated himself. Using the laser pointer he had hidden in his fingertips. Something you didn't even know he had. As a type of beam weapon. And trap. Gosh, it was amazing. In fact, he got three promotions on the battlefield alone. And yet, something was majorly off. He played with the narrative you gave him. But as you approached a large plastic construct, where the respawn location of the aliens was, together with the final flag, he stepped forward, the aliens not firing at him. I feel like the time for words has finally arrived. My captain. 
He turned around, and a huge group of alien staff bots appeared behind him as his hands were folded behind his back. Moon, are you? Are you betraying me? His face turned upside down. Precisely. He pointed his laser finger at you. Surrender, Captain, or die. <laughs> oh, Moon, 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 Moon. Don't you think I expected that? You said smugly. What? You ripped open your security uniform, losing two buttons in the process. Underneath, you wore Fezzerblast laser-proof vest. On it were six grenades duct-taped. This, Sun would have never allowed. An insane and white smile appeared on your face as he stepped closer. Staff bots, stand down. Mama will handle this. You said at the top of your lungs as you rushed forward into the group of alien machines and the traitor moon. Pulling at the grenades. And then you wrapped your arms around the animatronic. Your force and body weight causing the machine to get on the ground with you. The explosion sound effect of the laser grenades played. And even though you were in pain, after all you just had fallen onto a giant piece of metal machinery while having a fake suicide vest strapped around you, you were laughing. And so was Moon. You were laughing so hard you broke out into tears. As all aliens at the same time hung their shoulders and retreated to the respawn area. Your staff bots quickly moving in taking the flag. Victory. And probably the greatest roleplay you ever had. It was an hour later. You were sitting with Moon inside of the Roxy Raceway security office. The reason was it was the darkest. Moon was happily sitting on the desk, humming. I have never seen you so excited. <sighs> and I've never been awake for this long. That reminds me, you interjected. You haven't asked me about nap time once. The robot shook, his legs shaking. <laughs> well, he was searching for an excuse, and embarrassed, he scratched the back of his head. That's because I enjoy your company a lot, Miss Daygard. And I... I don't want a sudden stop to happen. Because you're taking a nap, even if it would be for me. Aw, that's so sweet of you. He chuckled, tapping his fingers together. Well, uh, you are sweet too. Uh, playing with me and all that. I, I never get to do that. I'm more surprised you immediately agreed to it. Moon scoffed, turning his head upside down. You woke me up in the middle of a war. What else was I supposed to do? Just lie down and die? You smirked, leaning against the office chair you were sitting on. Arms crossed. Well, it was a fair point. What else would you like to do with me tonight? I am very excited, as you can see. A lot of things. You said out loud before thinking, which immediately set up the expectations. Oh, what do you want to do? Uh, I mean, I have a few ideas, but I'm not sure if you'd like them. <laughs> Don't make me all hyped up for nothing! You quickly lunged forward, kissing the machine on the mouth. Wow. You didn't believe you were that straightforward. Thing. <laughs> Luckily, he could talk while his lips were used by someone else. Ah, uh, Miss Dago! 
Gold. You popped off of his mouth. What's wrong, Mooney? Getting shy on me? Moon's hands turned to fists, tapping them on the desks before wrapping them around your hips. One hand reaching down to her butt, grabbing a fistful of your soft ass meat. You moaned at his forceful touch, your face quickly turning red and excited. As strange as he tasted, due to his face being all metal and plastic, it was exciting having him fill you up like that. And you wanted more. You actually wanted more. You pulled away a little to catch your breath, his palms now resting on your shoulders, eyes focused entirely on you. Listen, Miss Gart, I have no idea why you're playing Fazer Blast. I have no idea why you woke me up. I don't even know why you kissed me. But I must tell you, I don't care. Because I was having fun. And what you just did, that felt amazing. I would love to have even more fun with you. You are surprised as the robot now pushed against you. It was being so forceful. It made you gasp, and your heart beating faster. <laughs> I don't mind having a little fun with you, Mooney. But... With a shaking hand, you reach for your breast pocket. I just need a sip before we keep going. Quickly, you pull out a small flask, opened it, and... Gulp down as much alcohol as you could within 10 seconds. You sighed as you closed it, throwing the half-empty flask behind yourself. You sighed as you closed it, throwing the empty flask behind yourself. Was that alcohol? I'm about to fuck an animatronic. I'm, I'm not going to do this sober. Language! Well, I am, you said. And the robot scoffed. Pfft. I mean, yeah. Yes, you are. Thank you to the people who are supporting me on Kofi. You guys are keeping me alive. Special thank you to my lovely darling channel members Aruna, Chloe Rockenbo, Cherry Red Bunny, Dee's Nuts, Nicodemus D, Cat Cove, Kaya Abyss, Bit Bit, Zings X3, Melofia, Lavender Cheese, Muffin, A Simp, Hella, Nexorist, AJ Anime Girl and Hopeful.